Hey there, welcome back to another YouTube video. We are so happy to have you. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we're gonna give you 10 sensory activities to do with sidewalk chalk. As pediatric occupational therapy assistants, we love using different tactile mediums for reaching our goals in therapy. And one of our favorites is sidewalk chalk. And with the weather getting nicer and summer coming, really excited to get outside and use sidewalk chalk for a variety of different activities. These are things you can do at home, you can do at the clinic. Most people are out of school for the summer, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're at school, you could still do these during recess, I guess. <laughs> Give your students sidewalk chalk and have them do these activities at recess. I feel like chalk is like the long lost tactile medium. And I feel like our kids are gonna get more sensitive to the texture and the sound and the feeling of chalk if we don't continue to incorporate it. So this video is going to give you all the activities, therapeutic activities, just fun activities that you can use with sidewalk chalk in order to bring back the love and joy that is sidewalk <laughs> chalk. There's a variety of different size of chalk and different types of chalk. There's the really small, thin pieces of chalk, and then there's the bigger, thick ones. And we like to use the smaller, thinner pieces because it promotes more of that fine motor development and good grasp patterns on the chalk, whereas the big ones, the kiddos can just hold it in a full fisted grasp. So definitely recommend trying out the smaller pieces of chalk. It's similar to the broken crayon theory in OT. We always go through and break all the crayons to promote that functional tripod grasp. We're gonna do the same with our small chalk pieces. So number one is hopscotch. It's the classic one. I think we've all played hopscotch as kids, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. teach your child how to draw the hopscotch grid, write the numbers in it, you can write letters in it, and do some jumping activities with it. The next one is a sensory path. If you aren't sure what a sensory path is, it's basically just a path drawn on the ground that activates a variety of senses. So you can think of drawing circles to hop in, you can draw a balance beam to walk on, you can have them do a bear crawl and put bear prints on the, on the ground for them to put their hands in. You can do lily pads for them to frog hop on. We like to incorporate different animal walks into our sensory paths. If you can incorporate different uh, yoga poses, maybe they have a, maybe you draw a sun and they have to do a sun salutation yoga pose or a cat and they have to imitate the cat and then the cow pose. Lots of creativity. You can make it as long or as short as you want, but sensory pads are really fun to do with chalk. The next one is to work on emotional awareness. So you can do this by drawing faces and different facial expressions with the chalk and turn it into a game. Have your child guess what the facial expression means. Is it happy? Is it sad? Is it mad? And then talk about a time when they felt that emotion and then reverse roles and have your child draw an expression or a face on the sidewalk and you guess what the emotion was and you talk about a time when you felt that emotion. You can also incorporate the zones of regulation into this by using different colors. So the happy faces are green, the mad faces are red, maybe sad and tired are blue, and you can start to incorporate those colors into it as well. The next one is to have your child lay on the ground or you lay on the ground and then grab the chalk and draw around their body. So you're basically tracing them. The beautiful thing about this one is you can have them fill in the blank. You can have them draw eyes and nose and mouth and clothes and fingers and fingernail polish and toes and pants and anything. And the, the cool thing about this one is it kind of simulates a test that we do in OT, which is the draw a person test. And it helps to increase that body awareness. So having them lay down, they can feel the chalk on their skin a great way to get some vestibular input laying down as well if that's challenging for them and then just getting those details and increasing their own self-awareness in that body schema. That's a super fun one. 
Next is gonna be to do infinity loop or rainbow drawing. And you're gonna do this one on hands and knees in that quad position and have your child trace or draw the infinity loop symbol. And you're gonna have them do this with both hands. So they're crossing midline, they're visually tracking as they draw this infinity loop. And then another way to do this is with rainbow drawing. So starting on one side of their body and drawing the rainbow arc all the way to the other, switch hands and do it again. This is a really great activity for that visual tracking, like I said, crossing midline. And then it also incorporates some primitive reflex integration because they're in that quad position and they're getting those different arm and head movements at the same time. Love that one. Next we have our, we're gonna call it the letter jumping game. I know it's very, very creative. <laughs> very creative. <laughs> but all you're gonna do is with your child who can start to identify letters, you're gonna draw all of the letters on the floor with chalk and you're gonna play different jumping games to help identify the letters, have them spell words by jumping to the letters, call out a letter and have them identify it draw lowercase and uppercase letters and have them match, or maybe they draw a line to connect the letters, the uppercase and the lowercase letters. Um, just having all of the letters on the ground for them to identify, it really works on that visual perceptual skill that they need to build and that letter identification. Next is to draw targets on the ground and toss bean bags to the targets. So you can set this up as a point game. Maybe you have certain targets that are worth certain amounts of points based on how far away the target is or how small the target is. And then you grab your bean bags and maybe you have a starting line set up where you have to stand to throw and you take turns tossing the bean bags to the different targets and whoever gets to 21 first wins. Maybe you incorporate different challenges of you have to toss one bean bag while you balance on one foot. You have to toss another ba uh, bean bag while you're leaning upside down between your legs and toss it that way, like the granny style bowling or whatever it is. And just incorporate more of those sensory components into tossing the beanbag to the target. The next one is a little bit more of a fine motor, visual motor, like art project. Mm -hmm. What you're gonna do is grab some painter's tape and put it on the ground, maybe in a shape of a square or a star or a heart or whatever holiday is coming up, an Easter egg. And then you're gonna put random pieces of the painter's tape, kind of in to make it like a geometrical, like art project, I don't, I don't Pattern know of some it. sort. Yeah. yeah. Color in the spaces in between the tape and make sure it's all full and beautiful and however you, however you, however you want it to look. And then when you're done, have the child rip the painter's tape off, another great fine motor activity. And then what's left is a beautiful, Piece of art. The next one is to incorporate more cognitive or school-based activities into the sidewalk chalk. So using the sidewalk chalk, you're gonna have your child practice different spelling words, maybe some different math problems. And even if you're doing this during the summer when your child's not in school, it's a great way to just keep up those skills and practice. Also doing this, you can have your child make the letters and numbers really, really big, like full size, big arm movements, which just helps to reinforce that motor memory for when they are writing or doing math at school. When you're doing it, big arm motions just cements that information into their brain. More proprioceptive input. Yes. Yes. So the last one we're going to have you try is to use a visual schedule with chalk. So maybe start your morning and go outside and draw squares and have your child maybe draw the activities that they're gonna do. They're gonna eat breakfast and then they're gonna go to the park and then they're going to read and so forth and then have a spot for them to check it off each time. So once they've completed their breakfast, they check it off. And once they've completed their reading activity, they go outside and check it off. So it's more of a multi-sensory approach, which we love, and it's just different. And that change is beautiful. The brain needs that change. It needs that novelty. So going outside and doing your visual schedule is a good way to facilitate that. Hopefully you liked these ideas for using sidewalk chalk. Hopefully you try some of them. If you do some of these activities, let us know, leave a comment on this video or tag us on social media and let us know that you're trying these different activities. If you haven't already, listen to our podcast, All Things Sensory by Harkla. You can find it on all major podcast platforms and we've got hundreds and hundreds of episodes that are so beneficial. Yeah. 
Make sure you follow us on social media. We're at Harkla underscore family as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. Definitely like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss a new video. If you are concerned at all about your child's functioning, their ability to get through those activities of daily living, don't hesitate to reach out and get an OT evaluation in person. We always recommend it. And uh, talk to your pediatrician. Advocate for a referral to OT and early intervention is the best. All right, that's all we have for you. So we will talk to you next time. Enjoy. Okay, I was so awkward that video. I don't think so. I Just the one where you struggled to describe it, but you actually did a good job describing it. Ugh.